Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, come learn with me, Greg Silverman. This is CIOs and Bowties. This is our series in our series of Come Learn With Me, another article that everyone liked and uh, shared from last week. And hey, it had to do with uranium. Uh, uranium is one of our mini groups that we, uh, an investment we really like, and uranium companies have been on the tear lately, but as, as has the entire market. So let's see what you all liked about this article. Um, how Athabasca uranium deposits were discovered from the air. Okay. Encompassing about 100,000 kilometers squared, the Athabasca Basin is a region in the Canadian shield of northern Saskatchewan and to a small extent, Alberta, Canada. It is best known as the world's leading source of high grade uranium and currently supplies about 20% of the world's uranium. Hmm. Remember that we highlight our various. No, you don't want to. You don't want to come. Okay. All right. So currently supplies about twenty percent of the world's uranium. Wow, that's a lot. The basin is in is. The home of both uranium producers and explorers, which are covered elsewhere on the Resource World website. Uranium in Saskatchewan was discovered in 1934 at Beaver Lodge in the northwest corner of the province and produced uranium from underground mines from 1952 to 1982. Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan's current status of being the world's second largest producer of uranium started in the corporate offices of the dynamic group of oil companies on the second floor of the Finna building in 1966 in Calgary. Okay. The group had an aircraft. Oh, so started in the dynamic group of oil companies on the second floor of the Finna. All right. The group had an aircraft that they used to go fishing on Vancouver Island that was written off as a business expense. Their accountant said, this must cha change. You must find some kind of exploration activity to justify owning aircraft. <laughs> Wow, let's see if we can get any of this midpoint. Steve um, Lloyd and British Radio Underground Mines. Okay, this is an aircraft, and the accountant said, No good, boys. The geologist Roy Jones said, that he had heard that aircraft equipped with onboard Geiger counter can detect radioactivity from the air and was being used over the Colorado Plateau where several mines were in production. Interesting. The director responded by agreeing to do the same thing in Canada. But where? Jones replied, in Saskatchewan, there's a large sedimentary structure called the Athabasca Basin consisting of sandstone and related stratified rocks. The closest thing to the Colorado Plateau and located next door from Alberta in Saskatchewan with the Beaver Lodge at Uranium City and added attraction. <laughs> Geophysical airborne surveys were an uncommon mineral exploration tool at the time. Airborne magnetic surveys were used to detect German submarines off the US coast during World War II, but not commonly used in mineral exploitation, exploration until years later. Off to Saskatchewan, the plane went equipped with a Geiger counter and flew a 27,200 line kilometer survey at a 3.2 kilometer spacing and a 50 meter eleva elevation at a cost of about 100,000 over the entire Athabasca Basin. Hmm, 50 meters low. The group received rebates from the provincial government through a pre-Cambrian incentive program for their Northern Saskatchewan program and radioactive anomalies they did find. As an oil company, they needed a knowledgeable partner and they consummated a joint venture agreement with the British American Oil Company, which later became Gulf Oil Canada. Gulf optioned five Dynamics Group exploration permits and proceeded to follow up on 34 high priority radioactive anomalies. Crazy, yeah? Drilling commenced in the summer of 1968 and anomalies on the west edge of Wollaston Lake led to the discovery of, of the Rabbit Lake deposit. The equally significant Key Lake, Clough Lake, and Midwest Lake high grade deposits were later found by others. The results of the world class rabbit lake discovery led to the recognition of a unique deposit 
model uh, to be called unconformity type. And the Athabasca Basin was the locality of this type of deposit. High pitch, pitch blend was found to be concentrated at the base of the sedimentary basin at the contact with the underlying basement rocks at the unconformity. In 1968, once the rumors of the gold discovery were made, the seven public companies of the dynamic group soared and a staking rush to acquire permits and claim blocks reached historic highs totaling some 12,000 kilometers squared by over 50 companies, only to be surpassed by the diamond discoveries taking rush at Quantwoyoto Lake in the Northwestern Territories in 1991. Wow. So what precipitate was a union, uh, uranium called land rush. In the events that followed the Rabbit Lake discovery in 1970, the Saskatchewan Mining Development Corporation was formed to later merge with El Dorado Nuclear Limited in 1988 to form Cameco Corp, a public company. Cameco and partners discovered the MacArthur River and Cigar Lake high-grade uranium deposits that went into production in 1999 and 2014, respectively replacing the mine at Key Lake, Clough Lake, and Midwest Lake Mines. Okay, so that's where Kamika comes from. And Kamiko Corp is still around, CCJ is the ticker. Cigar Lake in Arthur River. So these are all big uranium deposits. Um, currently, MacArthur River and Cigar Lake are in a safe state of care maintenance with production suspended due to the prolonged weakness of the uranium market and risks posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. New Continental Oil Company, Mill City Oil Company, Royal Canadian Ventures Limited, Consolidated East Crest Limited, Dynalta Oil and Gas Limited, Crusade Oil Company, Dynamic Oil Limited, and a private company owned by certain principles of the above companies. Oh, okay, that was the asterisk. <laughs> All right, disclaimer, the, the author owns some of these companies. Well, that's it, uranium from the air. Hope you enjoyed that. Interesting to see how Kaneko came about.